Killing Gamma Ray. This is Major Cigar. We must break free. We cannot allow our cherished American bounty to be tainted by the tangy flavors of Chinese communism. There's a moment in Freedom Finger, one repeated a few times over its duration, that kind of sums the experience up. In the midst of a hectic hail of chaos, the beat of the previously pumping music comes to a stop, and in that sudden interlude of silence, so too do the bullets and enemies on screen. This lull lasts just a second or two, and then the music kicks back in and everything jumps back into action. It's stylish and kick-ass and won't fail to bring a big old smile to your face. It's also, if you're playing the game as a serious schmuck, Something of a frustration. The dozen bullet trajectories you've been tracking are lost in the pause, and when the action starts back up again, you're momentarily at a loss and likely to take a hit that may feel unfair. Now, fortunately, a single hit in Freedom Finger is rarely much to worry about, but this example illustrates what the game is all about. It is a shmup, and it does require shmup skills, but it's more interested in giving you a rollicking good time and rocking you out than it is in competing with the more serious examples of the genre. But does its unmistakable panache do enough to cover any potential shortcomings? Well, let's look more closely and find out. So in Freedom Finger, you pilot a giant hand with an extended middle finger. You're sent on your various missions by the foul-mouthed, Nolan North-voiced Major Cigar, and the scenes where you're given these missions are not your simple schmuck excuse to just go and blow stuff up. In Freedom Finger, they're a big part of the draw of the game, and therefore need to do their job well. And they do. They do it excellently, in fact. The humour treads that fine line between being merely vulgar and being outright offensive, and while it looks now and then like it might be about to tip to over said line, for me it always manages to keep itself the right side, and as the story advances becomes more and more obviously a send-up of the attitudes it initially purports to be promoting. The voice acting, as you'd expect from its talented and much-touted cast, is first-rate, and these interactions, especially when they come after a particularly tough stage or two, always feel like a reward to enjoy, rather than the mash A to skip such dialogues often are. The story is fairly long, with a few twists and turns along the way, but essentially you are the pilot of the aforementioned Freedom Finger, and under the instruction of the boozed up and increasingly unhinged Major Cigar, are tasked with taking out Chinese military space forces and their also majorly unhinged commander, Kang. Along the way, you are occasionally asked to input dialogue choices, and while many of these are of the yes sir or ok sir variety, there are a few that offer genuine game-altering choices which will set you on paths through different sets of levels, and mean that even when you do reach the end of the game for the first time, you'll have something worth coming back for. And the game does need that, as despite offering very welcome online high scores for each stage, it doesn't lend itself to the sort of endless repetition most arcade style shmups offer. However, this isn't such a problem as it also contains far more stages than most shmups, and a complete run through of the game on normal will probably take most players a good several hours. Now, in terms of gameplay, you have just one regular shot available to you, a forward autofire straight bullets. Your ship itself has a couple of nifty features which add a really unique touch to the gameplay. First up, you can bunch the hand into a fist and punch enemies or environmental objects directly in front of you, to deal out some serious short-range damage. Repeat this move a few times and your ship will even throw a wicked uppercut. The second option is to reach out and grab enemy craft or artillery. Once grabbed, you can either chuck them at other enemies or in certain cases use the grabbed enemy's shot in place of your own. This opens up some real variety with multiple different shot types now open to you. However, while this element is a huge amount of fun and can really aid you on your journey, it's never necessary to use enemies this way and therefore doesn't really open the game up in any surprising ways. It is cool and it is fun, but it feels like there was more potential to its utilisation. The enemies you face come in a huge variety with both flying and ground-based enemies mixing things up nicely along with multiple environmental hazards to navigate. The game calls itself bullet hell, but that is, as is so often the case, something of an inaccurate use of the words, with only a very rare couple of boss patterns even coming close to something that could be traditionally referred to as Danmaku. In fact, the game follows much more closely the pattern of a traditional console shmup, 
It certainly does get manic on regular occasions, but with a generous health allowance it's usually fine to skip out of trouble by just ploughing through a few bullets to get to safety. I say usually some enemies, and which ones these are you can only work out through trial and error, do dish out massive damage and now and then you can end up with a nasty surprise as a stage you've been making your way through very nicely suddenly goes tits up with a single mistake that will leave you scratching your head as to why you're suddenly at death's door. This doesn't aid the replayability. A lot of stages have long sections that, while they set the scene marvellously, are slow paced and easy to drift through before sudden tough sections that will destroy you in seconds. Of course, to get back there, you have to make your way through these slow sections again, which can become a bit of a chore. This also brings us neatly onto something that is simultaneously one of the game's best and worst features all at once, namely the music. Now, overall, I think the soundtrack to Freedom Finger is great. Each stage features a different song from one of several different indie rock bands, and they vary in style from shouty to grungy to shoegazy. None of them would sound out of place at not so much a P-A-R-T-Y party, but more at a gathering of a dozen or so students drinking around someone's flat and getting stoned kind of party. Now, like I said, I really like it, but have you ever listened to even your favourite song twice in a row? How about three times? How about four, five? You can see what I'm getting at here. A lot of video game music is designed to sit in the background and, great as it can be, not bother you when you hear it for the tenth time. The tunes in Freedom Finger are not. I had to put the game down for a break more than once, not because I was frustrated by the difficulty of the stage I was stuck on, but because I couldn't bear to hear the same intro for the fifth time in a row, no matter how good it had sounded the first time. Overall though, I would call the music a real plus point in the game. When you make through your way through a level first or second time, the music can really add to the stage and every time I started a new one, I was excited to hear what sort of tune was coming next. But there's almost no song type music I know that could withstand being repeated so many times without becoming irritating. Now the other aspect of presentation that stands out is of course the visuals, and on this front Freedom Finger is practically flawless. Everything from the cutscenes to the backgrounds to the enemy ships has a unique and detailed hand-drawn look to it and is bursting with humour and hidden elements to make you smile. There's also a huge variety of stage types to traverse, each one bursting with character. I won't spoil them for you here, but in the middle section of the game there are a set of stages that really take things to a new level, reminding me of that moment in Kill Bill where the action suddenly shifts into an anime short, and honestly, I almost consider the game worth getting just for that experience in and of itself. Once you finish the game once, your favourite levels can be accessed from a chapter select, which will also allow you to see stages you might have missed in your first playthrough. The game offers a multitude of options to customise your experience, including censoring certain aspects, and the difficulty aspects, uh, difficulty settings are particularly noteworthy. There are a standard set of difficulties, with easier ones hitting you with points penalties and the more difficult one offering points bonuses. This is already a really smart way of doing things, and it's made even better by the fact you can customise and adjust specific aspects within these settings. One feature I was particularly fond of was the ability to alter what happens when you get hit after grabbing an enemy weapon, as even more than a health boost, this can make stages far more manageable without completely removing any challenge. So all in all, what Freedom Finger offers up is a decent if occasionally frustrating traditional and manic shmup that would get a decent enough score on its own merit. However, wrapped up as it is in this vibrant, vulgar, inventive, funny, stylish package, and with the absolute professionalism of all aspects of its presentation, it absolutely raises itself out from the crowd, middle finger proudly extended. If you are purely looking for a classic shmup experience, you might not get full satisfaction here, but if you're just a fan of games in general, or if you're willing to overlook some minor flaws for one of the most polished overall experiences the shmup genre has to offer, then this is absolutely a game you should keep on your radar. I'd give it a strong 8 out of 10 and can ensure almost anyone looking at this and thinking, hmm, I like that style, you almost certainly will also like this game. The production on this one looks to be far higher than most games we see in the shmup world, and I really hope it does well. Hopefully it might draw a few new fans into the wonderful world of shmups, while also entertaining some of the grizzled veterans. Thanks very much to Wide Right Games for providing my copy of this, and as ever, do let us know what your thoughts are if you pick this up and I will hopefully see you next time. Cheers.
ship in the good old U.S. of A. So you outsource it to China. Those shizlong shitbags must have reverse engineered the thing. Now they're zipping Gamma Ray around like a goddamn RC car. So what are we going to do now? Out of the frying pan and into the fire, eh? Kill them all. 